All right, uh, greeting calculus students and welcome back. So I want to continue from our discussion last time where we were looking at this differential equation right here, uh, 2y prime plus 1 equal to y squared. And let's take a little closer look at uh, the graphs of some of those solutions than we did before. So first off, if you remember last time, we discovered that this equation right here, uh, well not with the 8.5s, but with the general C right here, that 8.5 could have been any constant whatsoever, um, we saw that 1 plus C e to the x over 1 minus C e to the x uh, was a solution to this differential equation. We verified that using the left hand side and right hand side. Um, and we also saw the graph look something like this. So this is one possible solution. This is when the C is 8.2. Um, but there, any possible C would have worked, and we proved that last time. And when the C was positive, you basically have solutions that look like this. And when the C is negative, you have solutions that kind of look like this. And there's one other case, and that's when the C happens to be exactly zero, and that's when you get a solution that looks like this. And we sort of took a look at a graph that looked at all the different solutions at once, which is something like that. Let me see if I can get the flat line on there too. So there we go. All right, so these are all the possible solutions. But what if we were only interested in one specific one? So right now, this is the entire family of solutions. And the way we write the infinite family of solutions is with a C right here. Um, but what if there was only a specific one we were looking for? And usually what happens in sort of a real world application is that you're given a particular point. So I'm just going to say this is sometimes called the initial condition. So let's look at this spot right here that just appeared. So this is the spot 0 comma 2. So what I want to know is, and let me, um, so let me just hide all those, all those different graphs because they kind of got in the way. So you can see with all the different C's, it looks like there might be one particular C, like maybe right around here, it's hard to get it exactly, what actually passes through the point that we want. So if our goal is to find the specific member of the family that goes through that initial condition, that still is one of the solutions to this differential equation, uh, how would we do that? So let's take a look. It's really mostly algebra. Um, but let me show you how you can actually solve with an initial value condition. All right, so I shrunk that previous video up just to the corner here, like a little still screenshot, because I want to be able to do some work over on this side. So what we want to do is find the equation of this particular solution to this equation. So the one that actually goes through this point 0, 2. So now remember, there was like a whole host of other solutions to this general equation right here, um, but we only want one specific one. We just want the one that goes through this point. Now it turns out you can prove mathematically that there actually is a unique solution. There aren't two different curves that pass through that same point. That's actually a pretty hard proof. Um, but just take my word for it. Uh, we'll actually go through and figure out in a second that there's only one specific C that's going to work here for this. Now it looks like based on what we were doing a second ago in the video that that C is around 0.3 because that's come pretty close. But if you actually zoom in you'll see that's missing it just a smidge. So all right let's write out what we want. So we actually don't know the C value yet. All we know for sure is that our Y equation, our general solution, is Y equals 1 plus C e to the X over 1 minus C to the X. And we want it to contain the point 0 comma 2. Now incidentally, another way you can see that written is some authors will say Y of 0 equals 2. But this means the same thing, right? You just think of Y as like function notation, like F of X. So here they're saying Y of 0 is 2. So the y coordinate that goes when x equals 0 is 2. So it's the same thing as saying it passes to the point 0, 2. Either way, you're saying the x is 0 and the y is 2. And in fact, that's the key idea to find the specific c that we're looking for, is essentially you just go over to this equation and plug in, wherever you see an x, plug in 0, wherever you see a y, plug in 2. So that's what I did. Instead of y, I wrote 2, and over here, instead of x, I wrote 0. And this, it turns out, in this particular case, there's a lot of simplification that happens. Because what do we know about e to the 0? Well, e to the 0 is just 1. So c times 1 is just c. So effectively, that just vanishes. That goes away. And remember, our end goal is to figure out what is the value of c. What particular c value is the constant that is going to make this graph that goes to that point, the point 0, 2. 
Well, now it's just algebra to solve for c. So I'm just going to cross multiply here. So I'm going to do 2 times 1 minus c on this side and 1 plus c. I'm just kind of invisible times 1 right here on that side. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'll just distribute. So 2 times 1 minus c is 2 minus 2c. Here I get 1 plus c. Add the 2c over and get 3c. Subtract the 1 over and get 1. So if 3c equals 1, divide both sides by 3, c equals 1 third. So that's it. And incidentally, that is essentially the proof of uniqueness, assuming we believe this is the only form of the solutions. So c is equal to 1 third here. Um, so that's, if the question says find the solution that works, when I say works, I mean passes to this point and also solves this original differential equation, this is it. This is the one member of the solution that solves this differential equation and where y of 0 equals 2. Now you could theoretically leave the answer like this, and this is perfectly correct, but to my mind it looks a little bit goofy to have fractions inside of fractions, so I'm going to simplify that just by multiplying everything by 3. So in fact I'm going to say that y is equal to 3 plus e to the x over 3 minus e to the x. Alright, let's actually take a look now at how we can actually come up and manually make these graphs ourselves. So in order to be able to do this, um, I'm going to put an axis on and, I mean, an XC system, and actually highlights of these dots are just the integer points. Um, so normally there'd be like a ton more, um, but I'm just going to focus on a few here. So this is the point 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, etc. Um, and let's actually solve a, a brand new problem here. So how about we look at the equation, differential equation, y prime equals x plus y. So it's definitely not apparent what the solution is for this. And in fact, there's an infinite number of solutions. There's an entire family of solutions with a constant parameter c on there. Um, but let's get an idea just what the graph is going to look like before we actually come up with an actual equation. So to be able to do this, think about what this is saying for a solution. It's saying that if you pick some given point, I'm just going to pick this one right here, right? So that would be the point 0, 1. So if this was actually a point in the solution, what would it look like? Or what would the... Uh, just say on the differential equation. Well, at this spot, x is 0 and y is 1, so if you plug it in, it says that y prime, which is the slope of the tangent line there, is 0 plus 1, which is 1. So whatever curve would be, whatever solution we would have that solves this equation, at this point, the derivative there is 1. So the slope of the tangent line there is 1. So we're going to just draw a little bitty tick mark right there. So this is supposed to indicate um, sort of like a little mini tangent line here, and I made the slope be 1, so it's perfectly at a pi fourths angle right there, or 45 degrees if you prefer. Um, Alright, so at that point, that's sort of what the curve needs to be doing. And we're just going to do that for each of the points. So let's just look at this next point right over here. So this is the point 1, 1, so x and y are both 1. So if you plug that in there, it'd say y prime equals 1 plus 1, which is 2. So right here, the slope of the tangent line is 2. So it just looks a little bit steeper than that, so there we go. And I could do the same thing with this next point. So here the slope would be 3. And again, it doesn't need to be super precise, right? So I just need to make it look steeper than that one. So there we go. Well, what about heading in this direction? What would the slope through this point right here, the slope, the slope of the tangent line of a solution of this equation, what would it look like at that point? Well, that's the point negative 1, comma 1. So if the x is negative 1 and the y is 1, when you put it up in here, you'd say y prime is 0. So the slope of the tangent line there is completely flat. So I'm going to put a flat line on like that. Now, in fact, we can generalize that idea, right? Because it's not just at negative 1, 1 that the derivative is going to be 0. It's also going to be that way at negative 2, 2. Or right here at 1, negative 1 or 2, negative 2. This entire diagonal right here is all going to have a bunch of slope zeros. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those in. And now we can just kind of keep on going from there, right? So... In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all the rest. So it would be kind of tedious, but you can go through and compute the slope of each of these things. Um, notice that we are going to get some negative slopes as well. Right? So again, here's like a slope of negative 1, here's negative 2. Right? Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So this right here, this has a special name. Whenever you make a graph like this, it's called a slope field, or some teachers call it a direction field. And the way I think about it is sort of imagine like an ocean current. So if we were to like drop a, you know, piece of airplane wreckage or something right in the middle of the ocean, where would it go to? So, well, 
it sort of follows the current, right? So the red lines sort of give you the approximation of what this curve could look like. So you can kind of imagine, like if I drop one over here, it's going to curve down like that. So let me just go ahead and put that on there. That's if I dropped one right here, it would sort of curve down like this. What if I dropped one up here somewhere? Well, if that's the case, it would sort of start curving upwards like that. And there's one solution where it's actually not going to curve either up or down. And that's if I put it right here, because this is pointing in the straight direction, which points to another one in a straight direction, points another straight direction. So you would sort of get this nice straight line going through here. Um, in fact, we can actually make a conjecture based on the graph that one of our solutions to the equation is this straight line. Well, this is the straight line, 1 minus x. So, hmm, based on our graph, is that actually the solution to this equation? Well, let's find out. All right, um, by the way, I, I misspoke a, a moment ago, so I, I had accidentally said uh, 1 minus x. I meant to say negative 1 minus x, right, because it was going through the, uh, the third quadrant there, not the first quadrant, so the y-intercept was negative 1 there. So um, the question is, is negative 1 minus x a solution to y prime equals x plus y? So that's kind of our guess, and that guess was sort of based on the slope field uh, that we saw, but in fact, it turns out... I can actually tell you what the entire family of solutions is. Um, my claim is that negative 1 minus x plus any constant you want attached to an e to the x gives you the entire family of solutions to this differential equation. Now, don't worry about how I came up with that c e to the x for now. Um, we'll learn that a little bit later when we learn about solving explicitly um, differential equations. But we can at least verify, using the techniques that we learned last time, that this is actually correct. So let's actually check out the left-hand side. So the left-hand side of our differential equation is just y prime. Well, what is y prime equal to? Well, if this is our y, we just need to take the derivative of it. So the derivative of negative 1, that just goes away. The derivative of negative x is just negative 1. And the derivative of c e to the x, so it's just a coefficient, you bring it down. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And that's as simplified as that's going to get. The left-hand side is just negative 1 plus c e to the x. Well, let's take a look at our right-hand side. That's slightly more substantial. So our right-hand side says x plus y. Well, what is x plus y going to be equal to? Well, x is just x. For the y, we're substituting in what we think the y is, so we're going to plug in this. So we're going to plug in negative 1 minus x plus c e to the x. But there's a very simple algebra simplification which happens here, right? So because here's an x, here's a minus x. Well, those just cancel. And what are you left with? You're left with negative 1 plus c e to the x. So for the right-hand side, we get this. For the left-hand side, we get that. Hey, lo and behold, they exactly match. So in fact, there's an infinite number of answers, because c can be any constant, which solves this problem. One of those is actually y equal negative 1 minus x. That's the special case when c equals 0. When c equals 0, all the crazy e to the x stuff goes away, and you're just left with the straight line negative 1 minus x. When the c isn't 0, if the c is positive, you get those curvy up ones. When the c is negative, you get those curvy down ones. Well, as you saw a moment ago, it can be a little bit tedious to actually plot out for each individual point uh, what all the different little direction lines are. So thankfully, um, it, most of that's all sort of been computerized and automated. So here is a website right here. Um, looks like it's from University of Arizona. So I just went, I just googled um, slope field and it came up with this applet. And I'm actually going to scroll down just a bit so you can focus on the rest of the field right here. So there's actually more down below here that you can't see right now. Um, but that's okay, you can see the pertinent part. And this is the part where you enter in the equation. So right now I've just entered in zero, so everything's just flat. Uh, it's saying dy dx, in other words, y prime equals, and here you put the equation. So let's actually put in the equation we had before, which was x plus y. So that's what I'm entering in here. And the link, by the way, to this website, I will go ahead and put up uh, in the YouTube comment section. So here it is, x plus y down here. And I'm going to hit enter, and boom. So there, and it just did a lot more than what we had just done, too. Um, and I think you can see the sort of flow of things now. And what's particularly nice about this is that when you click in the applet, 
it's sort of, again, it's like you're dropping a little buoy down in the ocean and it's following the currents and you can actually see the curve. So how about I drop it right here? So I'm going to click and boom. So it gives me the coordinates of where I clicked and there's the actual solution. Now you might say, hey, it's not exactly following the lines. Well, the thing to realize is that when this thing moves continuously, there's other little directional lines in between the ones that are drawn, right? So you see this white space right in here, but this white space isn't really white space. There's little directional lines here. So it's moving in between. It doesn't just go directly from one blue little line segment to the next blue little line segment. It's being adjusted along the way. So that's why it doesn't exactly seem to fit here. But you can see the general shape of the curves here. So that's this one. I can click one that's down here, and there you go. That one was pretty straight, not too curvy. Here's one that's a little curvier. And if we got exactly on the straight line, although this I'd have to readjust the axis so we could get exactly on the one mark. But you can kind of see that's looking pretty straight right there. So, yeah, in real life, people don't do it completely manually because you saw how long it took us just to do a little, you know, uh, what was it, like five dots by five dots. So here, this is doing quite a bit more, and you can see the pattern a little bit more clearly as to what's going on. So for the next video, um, we'll actually see how to get the equation out of this, but this sort of shows you how to do the slope fields uh, when you're given a differential equation.